Attention class, class is in session, and welcome back to New Pantheon Academia here on Saving Throw Show. I'm your host, Stephen J. Pope, uh, also your dungeon master. Let's go ahead and meet our table before we dive into everything, starting with uh, 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 Aubrey, Aubrey, your, your show's later. What? Your, sh your, your, sh your show is- You're oh, not supposed to show just... till Tuesdays. Yeah. Oh, well, I found the link, so I figured I would just be here. Oh. I had a I had a conversation with Mika. Oh. Uh, it was a fight. I fought. Oh, <laughs> I oh. did a fight. I did a you hit. Did a fight. I did a <laughs> now I get to go here. Cool. So, so I see some things haven't changed. Not even a little bit. You know. <laughs> I, you know what? I'm I'm cool with it. Are you guys cool with it? Yeah, okay, the table's cool with it. I'm sure you guys are cool Come with meet it. Meet me in the comments if you have a problem with it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't. You don't want to meet it, Bri, in the comments. She always wins. She, she <laughs> does. She does. But yes, we have a very special guest today, uh, uh, Bria Iyengar. I'm so happy you're here. Missed Hi, you. I missed you so much. Uh, <sighs> she is a queen whom we must stand. I love her. Yes. <laughs> also joining us is Kelly Nugent. I'm still here. <laughs> How was your New Year's, Kelly? It was fine. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, it was, the, the, nothing's changed. I don't know. Nothing I, changed. I'm still here. That's what it is. There we go. I'm still standing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Standing. It's kind of what we can all say at this point. Yeah. Singing yeah. and dancing their way into our heart. It's Aki. Hi everybody, I'm Aki and I play, we, we are not obviously not doing our usual introductions, so I'm going to be the combo breaker and do the usual introduction. I'm Aki, I play Manny Brown, uh, whose uh, deity slash godhood is uh, Ma'at, the Egyptian goddess of truth, justice, and harmony. Uh, I play a guardian type, um, uh, which is fun. Uh, a uh, bit of spice of variety up in here. And as far as my vacation goes, I don't know, we don't need to talk about that. Okay. I've been sleeping a lot and watching a lot of TV. So that, much TV. That is the epitaph of 2020. I slept a lot and watched a lot of television. True. <laughs> and finally, and last but not least, Eric. Hello, everybody. My name is Eric, and I am playing Lennox Thatcher. Uh, who is the uh, currently has the goddess Ninkasa, the Sumerian goddess of of beer, uh, living with inside of him uh, as, as he goes around high school or yeah high school. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, yeah, and my 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 Christmas vacation was good. I got I got a headphones from Santa Claus and they're nice. <laughs> Happy to hear it. So yes, uh, what for those of you who are joining us for the first time, welcome. This is our first episode of 2021. I'm so excited to have survived and I'm so glad to have us here. Uh, Saving Throw Show is almost entirely ran by, by uh, your tips. It lets us know you like the show. It lets us know we gave you the feels. Like if you can't tip, don't worry about it. But if you do, there are some amazing things you can unlock for the show such as re-rolls for the table, which is the only way these guys get to have a mulligan. Only way. Otherwise, they just have to take the horrible things that happen to them, which I appreciate. Uh, at $120, we'll be having an anime convention episode. That's right. There's going to be smells, and there's going to be pricey food, and there's going to be cosplay. I'm here for it. At 180, Ghost in the Shell, the North Point Cemetery will have a helpful, cute ghost girl, because it's an anime. You need one of those eventually. Uh, who knows uh, mysteries around the Phantom Queen. She can be very helpful, but they're only going to get her if we hit that tip. Uh, next up is Fruits Basket, which has nothing to do with the conversation we had prior, where the school safety squad... Our player characters are going to unlock a new power, animal transformation. I'm literally like getting misty. <laughs> <laughs> yes. At, all right, if we hit 300, we will reveal who has the missing fifth key. Uh, I've been hinting at it all season. If we hit it, it will come out today. If we don't, you'll have to wait. Sad face. 
And finally, returning, because, by God, I want this episode. Let me have this episode. Please give me this episode. Uh, at 500, we will unlock a special What If New Pantheon Magical Warriors, a Sailor Moon Madoka Magica-inspired episode. Because I want it. I want it. I'm going to show up and play the little QB. Contract? You're going to be QB? Yeah. Curious. No, it's just so cute. Nothing bad. Nothing bad I happened. My, I made my mom watch uh, uh, Mad- Madoka the other day, and she was like, she fell asleep when the big thing happened. Oh, no. <laughs> and she's like, what happened? And I was like, you need to rewind. <laughs> <laughs> That was her brain going, shh, only peace. You can only know the peace of this. <laughs> I, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. If you put Madoka on in front of me, I will sit there the entire five hours. I will watch it and I will cry. Yeah. Oh, there will be so tears. Good. So good. So good. Uh, be right, UK. Thank you very much for the tips. Be uh, right. Be right. Also, uh, if you don't like doing the tip thing, and I understand, no one likes doing the tip thing. We appreciate it, though. Uh, but if you want to subscribe to Saving Throw Show, we will have a very special episode inspired by Dot Hack and Sword on Online and Bofuri. Uh I'm calling it the Isekai Special. What would happen Isekai. if everyone in this game? Yes. What would happen if everyone played an MMO together? What horrible shenanigans would I do? It would be fun. Speaking of Izakayas, if you want to see what I had for lunch today, you should go to my Twitter. It was very, very much Izakaya inspired. Ooh, I love it. Plug that Twitter. Get those followers. I just want people to see my fun cooking pictures because they're fun. Uh, I, I really need to learn to cook better. Also, real I can quick, teach you, hmm? but it'd have to charge. Your milkshake? He <laughs> brings all the go. boys to the yard. Fair enough. <laughs> Also, real quick, if you do subscribe, you'll also be canonized in New Pantheon Academia as a member of a club. You'll get thrown in at random. I do not decide these things earlier. You get what you get, folks. But you are officially part of the New Pantheon Academia world. So, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into our adventure. After a grueling... uh, emotional tumult where the four, well, three of you managed to save the school uh, theater from burning down when uh, the Phantom Queen summoned the Wicker Man out of the newest safety squad member, uh, Sander. Life continued. You had a very dull week at school. You had classes, you might've skipped them, probably not. You avoided calls from your parents. You ate mediocre cafeteria food. Dad called? Uh, no, 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 Lenny. I haven't Not... heard my parents' voices in over a year. I thought you loved it. <laughs> I like their letters. <laughs> my parents call every day, but I don't think they know what to say to me most of the time. It's mostly just a high bye conversation. I think they're probably just checking to make sure I am still breathing properly. It goes in and out. Right. Yes. But it was a non-eventful week at uh, North Point Academy. And frankly, you have to be grateful for that sometimes. This So Saturday rolls around. And Saturday is a very special day at North Point. Because Saturday is the only day students are allowed off campus. Without like a teacher hovering over their shoulder or something like that. Saturday, you are allowed to explore North Point, Oregon, the beautiful coastal town that, you know, if it looks a little bit like Twin Peaks, don't worry about it. And we are not going to start there. We're actually going to start at the school council room. This large, beautifully constructed building gifted by the Alumni Association. houses several people. Uh, Simi David is currently taking notes furiously. Hours without sleep is uh, sleeping. Someone should wake them up. But like, we all know they have sleeping problems. So like, maybe not. It's fine. It's fine. 
Uh, the school president, whose name I wrote down here, don't worry about it, uh, Lala Saeed, is going over the recent events at the school. Um, she adjusts her hijab a bit as she stands up, um, barely taller than when she's sitting down. So we have had vandalism in the cafeteria, an accident in the science building, and a fire in the auditorium. Does anyone believe these are related? Uh, no, I think they're probably completely random and uh, nothing really is going on with them. Still, we have had paperwork for the school safety society. Uh, yeah. Lennox, you're a member of that, correct? Uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe we should start having them give out more pamphlets. It's ran by uh, Iris Snow. Uh huh. D hmm. What dorm does she live in? Uh, she lives in my dorm. Oh, lovely. Um, don't recall ever seeing her anywhere, but um, good. Uh, if... She she likes to uh, stay in a lot. Uh, you know, because she fears for her life constantly. Hmm. Um, hence the safety squad. Well, that, uh, honestly, I feel like we should get the school counselor involved in that one, but uh, perhaps it wouldn't be a bad idea to allocate some funds to them. And she looks over to Helen Silva. Now, Aubrey, what does Helen look like? Uh, Helen is sitting in the corner of the room in like some artful, like geometric shadow. And the moment eye contact is made, she does the thing that I love the most in anime and pushes up her glasses and it catches a flash of light. <laughs> yep. And uh, with a little smirk, she's, uh, Helen is, she's tall, African-American uh, with long, like natural curly hair that like, it's long, you can tell it's long, but it's pulled back into like a super severe bun. Like she's very like immaculately put together, uh, sort of model student, uh, doing like the secretarial work for this council meeting as she is wont to do uh, in the corner. And just sort of like with a very like placid face, just kind of nods at, uh, at Lala. Just says, we can, we can absolutely allocate, reallocate some funds from all of our fundraising efforts to try to cover some of the damages from those unrelated incidents. I mean, yeah, that, that works too. I mean, I can have my dad, like, like I, I donate to it or whatever. I don't think we need to bring our parents into this now. Oh no, I would just, I would just, you know, uh, just fill out the paperwork and like forge a signature or whatever. Uh, Lennox. You just admitted perjury and- uh, No, I, I didn't admit to doing anything. I said I was willing to do something. Being willing to commit a crime isn't actually technically a crime. Uh, that... Jamal, the school vice president, just kind of puts hand on your shoulder like, dude, dude, stop, stop. I mean, as long as I keep it under stop. like a few thousand, stop. he's not even gonna notice. Oh boy. Well, um, Layla, I guess we could just use the credit card if we don't want it to be official. <laughs> it, it's... Layla tries very hard not to laugh, but she actually does giggle at that a little. <sighs> very well, very well. Um, well, if we have the funds for it, um, we have already given the pep squad the money for the homecoming raffle. I suppose uh, we can adjourn this meeting. Thank you so much for being here on a Saturday. Oh, snap, it's Saturday. Yes, Lennox. Um, uh, Helen, uh, would you mind taking the files down to the principal so he can uh, approve our new uh, allocation of funds? Of course. Thank you. Yes, and as the school uh, impossibly powerful uh, <laughs> School council disbands for the day. Eric, there's someone waiting for you outside. Oh. Who is it's, it? it's Brendan from the football team. Oh. Hey, Brendan, what's up? Uh, hey, dude. Um, yeah, didn't want to walk in there. It looked uh, kind of serious. Should, should someone wake up that guy? Nah, nah, he no. needs to sleep. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, listen, I was going to head into town. Wanted to know if you wanted to come with. Ah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. What? He pulls out his day planner. Oh wow! I got nothing going on today. <laughs> uh, That's an oversight. You, Nin- yeah. Ninkasa behind. Ninkasa appears behind you, and she is laughing. I am so proud of you. Oh, my sweet summer child. Oh, I just smushed your cheeks, but I can't. Oh. And you take solace in the fact that Brendan cannot see her. It's weird. I would have I would have scheduled something if I knew I had such a, a free day. But um, yeah, I guess I guess let's go into town. Cool. Should we take right. my car or your car? I was just going to walk. I don't have a car, dude. Oh. Okay, yeah, we can walk. Yeah, it's not that bad. <laughs> Helen, as you hear this inane chattering and walk past all these people having social lives and plans, uh, you get bonked on the head by something. <clears throat> she, like, looks around to make sure no one saw that and then looks what and looks for what it was from this you're standing in the middle of the quad and this came out of nowhere but a key with a very strange tail on it appears the tail looks almost like it forms into the head of a bird i excuse me i don't like to raise my voice and there's not a lot of people <laughs> did anyone drop a key from there, no the response. sky okay i will turn this in to uh, lost and found after i go and drop off these files in the admin building yes um as you put the key away you hear a voice I am your sword and I am your shield. What? Excuse me. Do you accept my power? I don't know who is talking to me in my head or if I am deeply concussed. So, no. who is, may I ask who's calling? You call me Thoth. I, I do. You put me in your pocket. I, hmm. <laughs> and then I think she finally like pulls out the key. Yeah. Uh, it is a key. Uh, it's the, are you a key? I am a God. Oh, okay, and I am having a dissociative episode. All right, well, we're gonna put everything on hold and go to uh, the the nurse's office at the very least. You do not require medicine, woman. I assure you, you are in perfect health. I can't tell you your exact date of death, though, if you are curious. Please, God, no, 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 no. Well, I'm pretty sure I've already died. So let's go with this. Yes to the first question and not the death one. That's never going to be. What, what is happening? Why is Thoth the key talking to me? Do you accept my power? Yes. And when you say that, a uh, large eye made of light appears underneath you. Papers are flying everywhere, and soon Thoth appears behind you. Ah. <laughs> Birdhead. Oh, hello. Yes, he is a large man of about eight feet tall. He does not seem to have legs. It seems to just go into infinity, and the bird head is massive with far too many eyes. I... I'm your sword and I am your shield. You said that earlier. Helen Silva, I give you my power. Thank you. Well, what does that mean? I do have several follow-up questions. I hope you have time. 
One, is there a cost that's incurred with that? Two, are you going to help me pick up these papers? Because that was inappropriate. Three, like, do I have to be like Egypt? Am I Egyptian? Is this like a 23 and me situation? Four, I thought it was Thoth. So that's interesting. It's Thoth. Five, do I know how to read hieroglyphics now? Take that's... those in whatever order you want. The papers begin to just kind of pick themselves up and put themselves back in your pile. And before he answers, you hear joyous laughter. Uh, by the exit, you see Lenny, and he seems to be followed by a floating pot of about six feet tall with a woman's face on it and large uh, reins sticking out of the head. Oh, oh, I must have some sort of tumor or... Um, mm. It's not a tumor. Oh, well, I, do, I don't expect a tumor to say that, but yes. Do, it, it, um, please explain. What is my power? How do my powers work? Do I just see things? What is... I'm going to need some more explanation here. <laughs> uh, Eric is showing his uh, doodle of Thoth. I mean, Thoth Oh, she's uh, a cutie. <laughs> yes. Helen Silva, write a word. Oh God. Uh, I pull out my favorite like leather moleskin that I, it's like a little one that I keep in the pocket on the inside of my blazer. And I just write down a uh, uh, rain. I don't know why, I think it's the jar. I, <laughs> rain. Your, the words move. And then a rain cloud comes out of your book. Oh, oh my God, oh God. <sighs> Please do not be on the papers. <sighs> it's a small cloud and it just kind of floats over there. <laughs> do I see it interacting with the rest of the environment? Yes, it is making things wet. Oh my God. Um, so that's what it does? That's what I do? I am the God of words. Oh. You have my power. Oh. All the time, I can just do this whenever. You will need to summon me, but I think we shall work together well, Helen Silva. I think that if I'm not in a coma, that this is going to be very, very fun. Hmm. And I wanna like kind of reshuffle all of those papers and like, walk weirdly around Thoth and I'm making a beeline for Lenny. As you make a beeline for Lenny, we are actually going to cut into North Point real fast. This beautiful coastal town doesn't have too much to it. It has like a Starbucks, there's a Target, but it takes a bus ride to get to it. Uh, Iris, you're in a new place for once. You're in an arts and craft store. Okay. Um, How are you handling it? Not well. Uh, no? No, no, no. Deeply disturbed. Um, There's googly eyes. Yeah, no, those are filthy. Bags uh, of googly eyes. Indecent. I don't want A lot of sharp edges. Sharp exacto knives. Okay. Huh. The likelihood of being bisected in half in this store is higher than in most. Why am I, why is she there? Well, Nanako wanted to make, wants to make uh, armbands for the school safety squad. As you have been, you're more, you're going to be approved. Like everyone knows you're going to be approved. So is Nanako there with me or am I yes, there? Yes, you are there with Nanako. Okay. She wanted your opinion on fabrics and colors. Okay. Nanako, anything is fine. Anything is fine. Really, I mean, I respect how much you are bringing to this club because clearly what I was doing when it was just me was not working. But really, any fabric you choose, truly anything is fine. Um, <laughs> she gets quiet for a moment, then she holds up a polyester cotton blend in a sharp... This is why I brought you... Flammable, flammable. Don't, uh, just uh, literally anything else. All right, well, how about cotton? Cotton's good, right? You know, it, it it's an organic thing, which means things can grow on it. Um, but 
of the fabrics here. Why not just like a fun plastic? Well, we tried that, remember? And we kept on trying to stab it with the clothespin and it just ripped itself up. It was You were not... trying to stab it. I was nowhere near anything that sharp. That that is true. That is very true. <sighs> I mean, you're, you're the club president. You should kind of like, I don't know, isn't it fun to pick the colors? It's, it's fun to know that I'm having an impact. I like the goal. I don't like the method by which we get there. Well, I mean, I try to get it from that one company that makes uh, the like 3D printed fabric, but it was going to cost us about $18,000 an armband. Well, can't we just get Lenny's dad to do it? That, that would require me to talk to Lenny. And I don't know if you've gathered this. Uh... Oh, come on. No, 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 no. Nanako, you made me go into this cesspool and you can't get the guts to go and just tell, just say something like, say, just say his hair looks nicer or, or the, he, he was running really fast during the game. His hair I, always I looks flirt, nice. But you know, do something. Oh, it's easy for you. You're pretty. So like. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Well, I Thank you. I, I feel like you see a lot of things about me that literally no one else sees. Mm -hmm. So thank you. It's nice to hear it. You're also very pretty, Nanako. She kind of blushes at that. Uh, th thanks. Um, uh, but no, I will not be talking to him. I will not be telling him his hair looks nice or that his butt looks great in those jeans or that I saw him wash his car once and I uh I'm saying all this out loud aren't I <laughs> yes you are mm, that would be my deepest fear yep yep I'm gonna go find a way to get bisected we were talking about that's higher here uh and she's heading towards the exacto knives Oh, okay. I'm going to like follow, but at a safe pace, <laughs> like at like, you know, 12 feet, because if I trip and fall, I don't want to like spear my eye with an exacto blade. So I'm just going to okay. kind of slow, like kind of power walk behind her. Um, as you are power walking in front of you appears Kali, the infinite void of nothingness that you have come to know and love in your head. If that's not therapy, I don't know what is. What, talking to me in a hobby store? Well, she's appeared, so generally that means she wants to say something. <laughs> Kali's not one for <laughs> ch idle chit-chat. <laughs> okay, well, what? I'm guessing you want me to do something really dangerous? There's been a hole made. Why? Okay, so what, I'm supposed to go and, 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 and what, close it up? Yes. Huh. With the group? Yes. It's probably involving the man them queen. Foth doesn't have eyes that you can see, but you can tell she's just kind of blinking oh, at Kali? you. Oh, Kali? Kali, Kali, I apologize. Okay. Kali doesn't have eyes that you can see, but she, she, she's blinking at you. Yes. I didn't think today could get any worse, really. Okay, does this mean that I have to, what? Should I text Lanny? I would use the text to summon everyone, yes. You are the closest one to the whole, after all. What? Is it here? It is not inside the craft store. Well, there's one good thing going for this terrible hellhole. Okay. You say oh. this and it's like beautifully lit. There's like some <laughs> acrylic paint. It's ran by this lovely old lady, but this, no, this is hell. You just see her go, ah. <laughs> I was going to offer her cookies. <laughs> I would not take cookies from a stranger. 
Are you kidding me? Uh, okay, fine. I'm going to text everyone. Um, uh, it's going to be all caps. Uh, uh, it's just going to say DEFCON 1. Now, Manny, you are in the middle of the used bookstore. And I say that term very loosely because it's at this point, hey, I graduated North Point Academy. Here's my fun crap. The used bookstore of North, the North Point used bookstore has DVDs out the wazoo, old video games, consoles, toys, collectibles. There's an arcade cabinet here that no one knows like what to do with. And you are with Ben. Ben brought you here because your dancing happened to save the save the pep squad from that uh, little rally debacle they were in. So they're trusting you with three hundred dollars to find what they will be raffling off during the homecoming dance. Three hundred dollars is a lot of money. Yeah, you think that, but then you get here and you realize all the good stuff is like I don't know. A hundred base, I guess. I don't know. Mm. Hmm. How many how many raffle prizes are we giving out? Uh let's see. I believe the club president wanted to give out ten. Ten? And we have three hundred dollars. Yeah. Nope, can't do it. I tried to do math in my brain and it didn't work. Okay. I heard a little bit. Ah. All right then. Well. Wow. Uh, good thing is my friends DJ Regular and Chad MB both work here, so they should be able to uh, help us out with uh, you know at least getting something that's not like I don't know gross. It should be like maybe semi-useful too. I find that gifts that like don't have more than one use tend to be kind of dumb. Like if they can use it a lot over like many different, different times, then that's, that's better. Useful gifts are good. Yeah. But like, what's a useful thing people want? Like generally when I get something useful, it's more like, Oh, thanks. I'm not like, you know, excited. No, but sometimes it doesn't have to be super exciting. I mean, like, hmm, like a really nice fountain pen uh, can go a long way or, or socks. Everybody likes socks. You know, I, like I think socks. they actually sell some like of those weird acrylic painter socks. You know what I'm talking about? The ones that have like the uh, starry night on them. I think they sell some of those here. Oh, huh. Yeah. You can get novelty goods that still have multiple uses. Well, I guess we'll get $300 of novelty goods. Um, also, to interrupt the scene real fast, we have unlocked the Isekai special. <laughs> Yay! Oh boy, this should be fun. Thank you all for your subscriptions to Saving Throw Show. It means the world to us. But yeah, I don't know. Um, as, as long as we get stuff that I think people will not only be able to enjoy, but also use more than once, at least then we're getting value for the money that we're spending. That's fair. Hmm. Oh my God. Uh, ben, Ben's a little shorter than you because Manny, you're, based, uh, you're kind of a tall kid, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Man, he like does that football thing where it's like, no, I'll go this, no, okay, I'll go around this way. And he goes running to the used DVD section and he holds up a box that is pink and frilly and it has a lot of moons and stars on it. It kind of looks like a cereal box. What's that, Ben? Oh my God, I, w I wanted to show you this. I can't believe they have it. Holy crap, holy crap. Okay, okay, okay. So, um, you, know, I'm, you know, I'm like in the anime club, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course you know that. Um, this, he kind of shoves the box in your chest. Uh, 
it says Super Space Royal Force on the front. And it has five brightly colored superheroes on it, each one color coordinated, and they all have like wands and whips, and one of them has a cartoonish axe. And he points to the blue one. That's you. I am not familiar. Okay, okay. So it's this old show from like the, you know, the 2000s when we were like babies. And like, it was only in Japan. That's how you know it's good. It never came to America. A anyway, uh, there's a character in here. Her name's Mari. And uh, she's from America. And she looks a lot like you if you were, you know, girl. And uh, you two, same person. Oh my God, I can't, I'm bu like, I'm buying this for you. I am buying this for you. You have got to watch this. You are going to freak. You're buying it for me? Yeah. Why? We're friends. We are? I mean, I thought we were. I I'm not saying I didn't think we weren't friends. I just, I'm not used to people just saying out loud, we are friends. I mean, I kind of figured you had a lot of friends. You're hanging out with, you know, Lenny and I, that Iris girl who is not dead. She's not dead. I, Lennox owes me 10 bucks for that. Um, oh wait, not Lennox, Brendan. Brendan owes me 10 bucks for that. They kind of look the same, but whatever. I Anyone who's that tall and that jacked, you know, and that white. I, 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 yeah, I've noticed that's a trend with most white boys. Yeah. But yeah, no, like, I figured you had a lot of friends. Are they my friends? Maybe they're my friends. Yeah. I... I have, I have friends. I feel like I kind of unlocked a moment here that, uh... I shouldn't have, but... Okay. I'm going to go ring this up separate so it doesn't get mixed up with whatever we buy for the homecoming rally, okay? Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, Ma'at, do I have friends? As he leaves, Ma'at appears behind you, the golden sphere with many wings. Uh, child, of course you have friends. I think they're like my first friends. I mean, Lenny and I have known each other for a really long time, but I don't think I would have ever called him, like, my friend. He's always kind of, like, mad at me for reasons I don't quite understand. It's because he is uh, white and heterosexual and incapable of expressing his emotions in a healthy way. Do we know that he's heterosexual? I feel like people are always making this assumption about him, but he's never said. That is fair. But he is, without a question, a, as Americans would put it, a wasp. Sure, but I don't feel like it's fair to make certain assumptions about him just because he's been pampered all of his life. Or at least, actually, I don't think he has. Have you heard him talk about his dad? Oh, it is horrifying. There's something wrong. And I know the Greeks. I'm, I'm not very smart, and even I know something's wrong there. Manny, you are very wise in your own way. Also, <laughs> there's a text message you've been ignoring. Oh, I forgot I had my phone. <laughs> I'm thinking this is not a good thing. DEFCON 1. No, that generally is reserved for crises, though Iris is always in crisis. Also, there's like skulls. <laughs> I feel in a like... a separate text message? Yeah, and then like question, 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 question mark. I feel like you're not wrong. But at the same time, I feel like she's also the type of person who, unless it's actually like really, 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 really bad, she doesn't just send this kind of message. But even if so, it would be nice to see her. I haven't seen her in a while. Hmm. I don't know what she's been up to. Let's go find her. As you wander away from the used bookstore. Without telling Ben I'm leaving. No, no. Ben just turns around. He's like, Manny? Manny? <laughs> <Poor> ben. 
Lennox, uh, how is your walk going with Brendan into town? Well, haven't I been interrupted by somebody? Well, yes. <clears throat> uh, Lennox. Ah, yeah. That's Brendan right. nearly jumps out of his skin. Oh, Christ, where did you come from? Mm. I'm sorry, I'm not speaking with you. Can you give us a moment? Brendan looks over to Lennox. No. What? Like, I guess I'll keep up here. You can take my car. We'll catch up. I am not. I don't even have my license. Oh. Right. Um. And then, like, he just like, uh, how much do cabs cost? I don't. Uh. Here, take the keys back. Take the keys back. Listen. I just need like five minutes. You're having a whole emotional beat with Lennox, and I don't really care about that. Just please stand over there for Ms. a few Silva, seconds. Silva, shocked by emotion, shock and awe. Oh my God, the world must be upside down. Listen, I'm going to be at the record store if you want to catch up. Ah, oh, sick. And he continues on his way. <clears throat> Sup? Uh, uh, just a, oh my God. Um, I have a very strange question. And mm -hmm. if the answer is no, I need you to forget that I asked it. Yeah. Uh, have you ever seen a giant jar behind you? Yeah. I mean, hold on. Am I allowed to tell people that I see you? Ninkasa appears and she is joined by Sun Wukong. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a giant jar and a uh, strangely attractive monkey man. Do I like pretend I don't know you? Like if if they bring it up first? I mean, the cat's out of the bag, sweetheart. Okay. Yeah, you're right. I kind of I kind of messed that one up. Yeah. Yeah, all the time. So you see it. Hold on. Um if you look like 20 feet to the southwest of me right now, do you see a very tall bird person? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, that means you got a key. Oh, sick. Why do you know about the... Mm, mm. Oh, because I got two. What? I have two keys. This is Ninkasa, and this is Sun Wukong. The handsome monkey man just kind of slides over. How you doing? Oh. Mm, I'm a minor. Please step away from me. I'm a monkey, so... It's still really problematic, though. Uh -huh. Ninkasa literally grabs him by the neck but with the reeds and just kind of pulls him away. I'm sorry for him. He is incorrigible and gross. I've warned him about this. I will keep him in the dorm if he keeps this up. Don't do that. Uh, um, Lennox, I just, um, so a key fell out of the sky and hit me. And now there's a bird person that has given me powers where uh, I, do you have powers? Uh, yeah, yeah, no doubt. So you're rich, unfocused and incredibly powerful. Like that's all, the, all of those things. No, I, I definitely have a, a very strict direction in my life. Mm-hmm. Please go back to the powers part. I'm sorry. I'm processing oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. a lot right now. Are there others that are like us? Also, oh, yeah. am I bleeding from like my nose or somewhere? I just- Not that I'm... I can see. Okay. Well, all right. Unless your blood's like invisible now. Is that like your power? Invisible blood? Is that a thing? Is that a... I'm not going to yell. No. Is that nope. a thing? <laughs> it's nothing. This is nothing. Okay. What do you do? Uh, I can like- uh. Hecka like turn into water and like shoot water and like liquid and stuff like that. Show me now. Ah, uh, yeah. And then he just kind of puddles like Alec Mack <laughs> and then comes back. Oh my huh. God. It feels like really weird. Okay, are there others that can do that thing that you just did? Uh, this one specifically, uh, I don't know. No. Oh, okay. no, sweetheart. I am the only one that gives that power. Okay, I'm gonna talk. Uh, I, 
may I talk to your god jar, please? Oh, she doesn't need my permission. <laughs> it's true. How are you, sweetheart? I the giant am... jar says to you. Thank you. I am struggling right now and having a conversation with a with a massive uh what culture would this be is this i'm sumerian sumerian okay i wasn't sure with the cuneiform i didn't want to assume uh a massive it's heck of weird yeah it's yeah. like real weird mm. um do you uh there are others yeah. yes yes hundreds why thousands millions why? possibly oh well oh. I, I can take this one. Um, oh, okay. But basically, you know, um, there's that that urban legend of uh, the Phantom Queen who haunts the school. Uh, well, spoiler alert: she's like, like really heck of real, and like, like she won't just make you like miss your homework. She'll also like straight up like murder you, and she like kidnap all or most of like gods and put them in keys and stuff, and then she's like using those keys as like power to like do stuff, but. Um, but a rabbit uh, stole the keys and then he gave them to us. Okay, I'm Orpheus going to stop you there. Uh, I'm going to stop you right there for a second. You're going to take me to the others that you know of right now. Oh, yeah, sick. Uh, I mean, Iris is, is wants to hang out. It's Iris? I, yeah, she- Iris Snow? Yeah. Uh, okay. It's just DEFCON 1, so it's not that- Oh, five skulls. This actually might be important. Wait, yeah. it, uh, hold on one second. Uh, excuse me, Thoth. Is everything I write down going to become a thing, or can I continue to take notes? As you shout down to folks, uh, Be Right UK, Que Squared, and Draconics, who are all heading out to town together, kind of stop, and they're like, Helen talks? Mm. She yelled at. Keep walking. Without, without further ado, they do. Thoth appears uh, about two feet in front of you. That is disquieting. Please answer <laughs> yeah. my question. I'm sorry, for Stephen, could you repeat the question? Yes. <laughs> uh, can I, if, is everything I write down going to manifest like the rain did or am I allowed to continue to take notes uh, per usual? I'm trying to figure out if this is like a Midas situation where now my schoolwork is... will suffer. It is not a Midas situation. You simply need to request my power and I shall give it. Okay, thank you. Please uh, come with us. Uh, Lennox, right now, we have to go right now. Take me to Iris. Sure, your car or mine. I, I don't, most of us don't, your car. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> As the two of you head to the parking lot, uh, we cut back down into town. Uh, Manny, you have to watch your back because you just saw Kelly and Shidari Aki and they have their baseball bats and they got their chains and they're ready to wreck some stuff and they're, you know, those two. They're a problem. Rough. They're a real problem. Aki is the worst. Oh, can't <laughs> trust them. You can't trust really, them. really can't. can't trust them. Yeah, you see them, and you see Vrackbeard from your English class, and Vrack, Vrackbeard is just, sees them, walks the other direction. They're not dealing with that today. Yeah, Kelly Kelly, and and, and, and Mika and Aki and Eric are all like- You can't the trust worst. them. You can't. They're problem children. They are. They're and problem. it's worse when they're all together. Oh, when they're all together, it's a nightmare. So also that Steven guy. I get bad vibes. I haven't seen Steven in a while. Oh, guy doesn't leave his room. It's like Iris, but less charming. Ugh. Speaking of which, where is Iris? Um, <laughs> well, you might want to ask that before you just wandered out into town. But Manny, oh, yeah. as you're wandering, uh, you find yourself near the North Point Cemetery. This beautiful uh, brick construction gate around this whole, well, cemetery. Uh, you see some members of the occult club, uh, D&D Jordan Lee and uh, 
Miss Theory Throw and Pez Pusher, they're all there and they're all being goth and spooky and they're probably trying to summon something. Again, when is the occult club not trying to summon something? One day they're going to uh, get the horns, as some people like to say. Yes, but you also see some cops here. Ooh, don't like them. No. Uh, And you also see some students from North Point paper trying to interview them. What? What is going on? I am going to cautiously approach, but keep my distance because no cops. Yeah. Uh, As you approach, you see Coder Cactus from the school uh, paper. Thanks for the sub, by the way. In case you haven't noticed, all these strange names happen to come from your subs. Coder Cactus is... uh, Gosh, I wonder how that happened. I know. Goodness. Coder Cactus is... uh, has their phone out and they're interviewing the police officer who doesn't really seem interested in talking. Uh, They've set up a barrier around a kind of fancy looking stone mausoleum in the center of the cemetery. Blind Seer, whose name is ironic considering they're the photographer for the school paper, is uh, trying to get a good shot. And Magani is trying to keep, make sure neither of them get arrested. Hmm. All right, keep it moving. Keep it moving, kids. But I don't suppose there's a way that we can get a better, closer, easier look at what's happening in there? Hmm. You could reveal the truth. I mean, yes. But can we do that in a way that is subtle and not super flashy? Child, I am so proud of you right now. All right, so uh, we're actually going to be doing this the mechanically sound way. Go ahead and spend an AP point. Woohoo! Am I doing the first roll of the year? You're doing the first roll of the year! <sighs> I know! All right, what am I, what am I rolling here? Uh, we are going to make this a speed and intelligence roll. My best attributes in so good at intelligence. I know. So good at it. Narrator's voice, they were not good at intelligence. Uh, it's only a five. All right. You only needed a four. Uh, your eyes glow a little bit gold, and it feels sort of like you're taking a hot shower. Um, and you can see inside the mausoleum. And you see, there's a pile of bones. It's very bony in there. Someone has opened up everything in there, and it looks like you just put them in a pile. Oh, no. Not just bony. Uh, somebody has desecrated this mausoleum. Who did the mausoleum belong to? Which family? Or families? Uh, it belongs to the Freeman family. Freeman. Freeman. Freeman is usually an indicator of is this family African American in origin? Well, as you look around, you do notice an older African American woman who looks pissed. Oh. Not great. No. What? She's kind of, she's kind of dressed like uh you know Helen Silva. It's like Helen Silva plus 40 years and way more board meetings where she had to call people out on being sexist. Why does she look like somebody I know? Hmm. How far, how close, far is this woman to the mausoleum, like in relation to the cops and all of the students and... Um, she's keeping her distance. She's more or less just making sure no one does anything stupid. You could approach her without problem. Cool. I think that Manny will do that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, she looks down at you. Uh, she has her hair in cornrows and there's just an intensity to this woman that is, uh, admirable. Yes. If you're with the school paper, I swear. I'm not. Um, I, I mean, I, I do go 
to that school, but I'm not with the paper. Um, I was mostly just curious. Um, I don't. I, I don't suppose you know why someone would would want to mess with your family's mausoleum. I know that sounds a little bit like somebody from the newspaper questioning you, and I apologize. I I just I might be able to help. Go ahead and give me a charisma roll. Okay. And add two to it. Cool. I don't suppose we've ro- ro- un- unlocked rerolls yet. Um, <laughs> doesn't look like we. Oh, no, we are uh, ten dollars short. Well, nine dollars <laughs> and fifty cents short. Then I guess a five will have to do it. <sighs> I'm the third family in a row to get hit like this. Hit. So she points out a few of the other like fancier mausoleums in the cemetery. Someone shows up, middle of the night, empties them all out, and leaves. The bodies are left. Anything they're buried with is left. But honestly, if I ever find who's doing it, I'm going to kick them so hard in the nuts, it will pop out their nose. Oh, why does this feel like Oh, uh, I feel like I studied something like this in history class or something like that. Matt? Who's Matt? Ma'at. Oh, sorry. Just talking to myself. Uh, I should do that in my head and not out loud. You do that. And she is going to put a little distance between you two. Um... But seriously, no, Ma'at, why does this sound like something familiar? Removing bones from graves, but also removing the items from the graves. Well, child, she, they do not take the items. It sounds like they just move them around, almost like the bodies are just moved for the sake of being moved. Is this Loki? Hmm. I wouldn't put it past him. He is a troublemaker after all. I wonder if he's doing it just for the attention. He really needs a hug. That's that's a first, my child. Iris, what excuse did you give Nanako so you could uh, ditch her for a bit? I I have to um, fold my shirt. She doesn't believe you, but she lets you go. Great. And Kelly, Kelly, that was an attack against me while I was attempting to drink a beverage, <laughs> and I'm I'm not okay with this. <laughs> and Kali has led you, Iris, to the cemetery. And there you see Manny. And then I'm gonna hold up my phone. Hi, hi, hi. I tried to ask questions, but then I think I said something that kind of made people nervous and they moved away from me. But apparently this is not the first time somebody has raided, oh, I guess I should catch you up. Somebody raided the mausoleum, moved all of the bones around and left them in like a big pile in the middle of the mausoleum. But apparently this is not the first time it's happened. It's happened at other places too. And I don't know why. I think maybe Loki is messing with us, but I don't know for for sure. I haven't done a full investigation yet. I was waiting for the rest of you to join me. Okay. I've been through something similarly traumatic. I was in a hobby store. Oh also, no, there are way too many knives in in a, in, in a hobby store for you. Yes! And Thank paper. You. you could get a paper cut. Yes! Nearly anything can cut you. You just don't know it. Were you, oh. like, why are you not fully padded? You know what you should do, Iris? You should rent, like, hockey pads from the school. So that whenever you go out, I you did can not just... Know that I could do that. I'm not sure you can either, but I'm sure they would let you if you asked. I have, I'm, 
I'm almost positive this school makes enough money that they have a few extra sets of pads lying around. You know, Manny, you always talk about how you're not smart, but you come up with just like the best ways to just let me keep being me in a way that everyone else says is unhealthy. And I really appreciate that. I don't think there's anything wrong with you. Thank you. Then I don't have to change. Gosh, it's so annoying that everyone keeps saying that I should try and change. Why Thank should you. you? Why should you change? You're perfect just the way you are. Oh, wow, Manny. Okay. Oh, I'm getting distracted. There's also a hole. A hole? Yeah. There's a big hole. Kali told me it's near here somewhere. I don't know where it is. It's not in the hobby store, although you would think it would have one. Any way that's connected to the person who's messing with the mausoleums? Is it? I don't know. I could ask my aunt. She will definitely know. On cue, uh, the winged, the winged my aunt appears. Well, I'll put it this way. If it's not, I'll be very fucking surprised. <gasps> Sorry for the F-bomb. I you learned it from- F- Yes. Actually, I wonder if this key could help us. And then they pull out like the rat disease key. Oh no. Both of you hear the hissing noise and it just kind of like, it's almost we- wiggling in your fingers. It is not a pleasant key. I mean, we are in a graveyard. If there's a hole in bones being messed with, I feel like there's no better combination of people to look into this than this key. Oh. And maybe, and maybe Kali, but probably this key. Well, I know that Kali probably doesn't have fleas carrying bubonic plague on her. So I'm willing to ask her and we can wait on, on, on the rat thing, on the rat key. Or we could ask them both. I mean, there's no harm in the asking. We don't necessarily have to unleash their powers. We can just ask for their help. That's true. So these bones, they're all all mixed up? Yeah, apparently all of the different mausoleums have been hit by this thing. Third or fourth one that's been hit. I figure if anybody's going to know a thing about what they might have in common... This key Maybe might it's help. someone curious about where we go after we die. Maybe. Holly appears right behind you, Iris, and whispers in your ear. I can answer that. I don't want to know, Kali. <laughs> well, I mean, if you Kali, are very fun to tease. If Kali knows the answer, do you know the answer? Sometimes to- knowledge is good. Uh, to the existential question that humanity has asked themselves since you uh, gained consciousness, or the oh. one about, or the one about uh, why people are having dance parties in the cemetery. The second. Oh, oh, that's just that's just Baron Samdi. I'm sorry. Can you say that one more time, please? What is that word? Baron Sam D. And Helen and Lenny, that's about the time you two arrive. And Helen, you see a giant black uh, space cloud saying Baron Sam D. And trying very hard to enunciate with no mouth. And Manny is just going, wait, I know this one. I know this one. Why do I know this one? Baron Sam D. I feel as though in another life, this person was related to me. Aha. Ah, hey. Oh, hi. Hi, Lenny. Hi, other person with something else happening. This is no, this is uh this is Helen. Uh she's got a key too. And on the on the on the on the right side or we we know that Helen's not on the PQ side. Um on the what? Fantastic. You can just speak out loud to me. Hi. Hi. May I... Are you aligned with the Phantom Queen? What? Oh. Uh. No. You know... Are you? No, we're not. We're, we're trying to fight her. Hmm. Okay. You know and who you... I am? I know 
everyone in this school, because it's important to know these kinds of things, emancipation. Yes. So this is the first you, time I've heard your voice. I, so I'm fairly certain it's probably the first time she's heard your voice too, Iris. Or seen me. <laughs> Actually, yes. What is your condition somehow related to your key situation? Mm. No, I've actually gotten better since the key thing, if you can believe it. It's been a major improvement, says the swirling vortex of space and death. (sighs) Can I? I can, yeah, I can see Helen's deity, right? Oh, absolutely. You can see the uh, winged man. Ma'at? Ma'at? Wait. Ma'at? And with that, Ma'at appears. Thuf, Ma'at. Holt, I, uh, aren't you married in Egyptian theology? We have uh, a relationship. Is that going to be a conflict of interest? I don't see why it would. Neither do I. Yeah, if they fight, uh, one of them just disappears. Wait, what? Do we fight? Are we supposed to fight? What is happening? I don't want to fight Helen. No, the parents. Um, Ma'at, please do not fight Thoth. I had no intention of fighting Thoth. And more importantly, Lennox, every time you speak, I learn more about you. And the truth is becoming more and more bleak. Well, okay. don't worry. If I you, like this If one. they do fight and one disappears, you'll just find out about it by letter. Iris, you are in the same boat as Lennox. I need you to know this. No. Um, my dad didn't write a letter. He had his secretary sit down and explain it to me. It's very different. We're very, it just, it seems on, at first glance, it seems the same, but it's very different. It's really, really nice to hear your voice, Helen. And I'm, I like your deity. <clears throat> thank, thank you. I have had Thoth for uh, about 30 minutes now. And I think that I am processing all of this incredibly well. Yeah, definitely. Yes, Ma'at, definitely. Ma'at nods. You are handling it exceptionally well. All things considered, yes. Thank you. I mean, that being said, I don't, I don't think any of us handled it particularly that badly. Um, but yeah, for somebody who's coming into this kind of in media stress, you're doing pretty good. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so what can you guys do? Because I can do this. Uh, and I pull out a little notebook and I like kind of look up at Thoth and give a little nod. Um, shoot, uh, what's the, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna write the word rainbow. Okay, all right. Uh, also, real quick everyone, we're only $40 away from our next unlock, so <gasps> just thought That's I'd share close. that. Why don't you go ahead and spend an anima point and give me range and charisma. Uh, you just said so many words that don't mean anything to me. So in the tracker, okay. in the tracker, you're going to- I my... marked one down. Cool. Yeah. And then you. you've got the sheet. two different stars. Uh-huh. You should have like a, 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 yes. a die. It's, it's yeah. technically yeah. going to be charisma and range. Those are the actual order. Yes, thank you. So okay. to explain real fast, let's see if I can get this focused. Your top star is your human stats. Your bottom star is your divinity stats or anima and game okay. Okay, so I'm gonna roll both of these dice and, and then tell do me the number. What? Add All them right. together. together? Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, together it's 17. Oh my goodness. Um, oh my God. Okay. So we're just Helen, rolling like six. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Helen, you put a rainbow in your book, and I'm not saying magical girl. But it's fucking magical girl shit as this thing comes shooting out. Like you 
butterfly in the sky. Butterfly in the sky. <laughs> You're going twice as high. <laughs> Take a look. It's, it's in literally the in the book. <laughs> a reading uh, rainbow. It shoots out, and her super cool, like ice queen exterior. Uh, uh, she screams, throws the notebook, and jumps into Thoth's arms. <laughs> Um, Thoth <laughs> has problems being tangible, so it doesn't really work so much. I'm fine with hitting the ground. That's even better. I yeah. think Manny actually throws themselves <laughs> forward in order to keep Helen from, like, busting her ass totally. Uh, at that point, four members from the cross-country team, uh, in Althea, the Nat 30, Sparkles 1424, and Arkwin 101, Rich people give their kids the silliest names at the school. Yeah. Um, all stop jogging and they look inside the cemetery at the tumult and they look over at you, Helen and Manny. Did, did, did you guys see a rainbow? Um, no. Mm, okay. Yes. No, no rainbow. Only the rainbow that is in my heart. <laughs> they all nod and then you you can hear them talking to each other yeah I, I think we need to get home maybe, maybe we got that bug that's going around I don't know man I think I need a smoothie and a lie down <laughs> are you okay I <clears throat> yes I think I can do this and I manifest my my truth sword <laughs> <laughs> oh a sword okay um sure what why what why Oh, this sword reveals the truth. How does it work? Well, Ma'at is the goddess of truth, justice, and harmony. And so whenever I need to uncover a, a secret or a truth or, or like there's some sort of mystery that needs to be solved, I summon the power of Ma'at to help me. And sometimes the sword of truth can uncover like bad things. So like if we're fighting a tangible enemy, this sword can usually like slice them all to pieces and stuff like that. I'm pretty sure that at some point they might be able to do more. Right now I'm only focusing on the truth part. Eventually justice and harmony will, will also happen, I think. I support it. By the way, we have unlocked rerolls for the table. So go ahead. Every We have five rerolls on the table. Anyone can... Uh. We need Thank it. God, I've been rolling so, so mediocrely. <laughs> Anyways, I'm taking up all of the space here. I'm so sorry. Other people have cool stuff they can do too. Um, Iris's power is also very neat. Yeah, it's, I don't know, it's pretty neat. And then I wanna hold out my hand and from it, um, Kali helps me um, burst forth a small galaxy and we watch it be born and then like there's like planets and somehow looking at it you just know like it's too small to really see but if you look deep into it you know you know in your heart the struggles of the people that have risen and gone through wars and gone through getting be better and then going back through wars and then they finally achieve peace and happiness and then it blinks out of existence and it's over and that that all happens in like one second and then your eyes are wet afterwards. Um, Iris, the implication of that power is hmm? staggering. Yeah. Oh yeah, it hurts people sometimes. Not for nothing, but it, it kind of helps if you just like uh, totally uh, ignore the greater ramifications of uh, all we're dealing with. Uh, <laughs> you just just suppress it. It's it's a really easy and useful skill. We is really good at it. We haven't a couple. We do have a couple of keys that we haven't used yet, mostly because we don't see a reason to use them, like this one. Um, we have one other key too that we haven't actually done a whole lot of exploring with, but I'm really curious about that one. Anyways, I believe that we have both a mausoleum full of random bones mixed all together and a hole that we need to investigate. And they I'm may sorry, be related. What, why? 
So somebody has been hitting up the different mausoleums, pulling the bones out of the mausoleums, mixing them all together and laying them in the pile in the middle of the mausoleums. And there are like two or three, maybe four of them that this has happened to. And then apparently Iris has been told that there is a hole somewhere. Yes, um, there's a hole and it probably means our destruction. Um, and then regarding the bodies, I found if, you, if it's hard for you to conceptualize it, Imagine that each of the bodies is a deck of cards and someone's shuffling them. You're like me. It's mm -hmm. horrifying when you talk. <laughs> we've all started to get, we've all started to get very used to it. Actually, Iris's ability to express herself has been very informative and helpful. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, Iris, uh, they're totally going to give us more money for the safety squad because, you know, things keep catching on fire. Oh, because of all the flammable fabric they're probably using. No, it's Wait. mostly because of because of us. Oh. I snap a pencil. <laughs> oh, Wait, you're responsible? What? Wait, what? No. You and your gods are blowing the student council's budget no, no, this no. This is why I was so willing to commit uh, fraud. I feel as though the truth is being mixed up here a little bit. It is not our fault that these things are happening. The Phantom Queen is instigating situations with, with uh, to which we then need to respond. And it has resulted in things being a little bit out of hand sometimes. But now I, yeah, we she will always you. starts it. We all we will grant you that anytime this stuff happens, we happen to be there, and the more of us are there, the more destruction there is. But uh, causality is not correlation. You know? It's not our fault. We're trying very hard to mitigate the issue, and the Phantom Queen seems very uh, uh, intent on making it worse. I don't yeah. know anything about the Phantom Queen, but I will be watching over your shoulders as you deal with the bone deck of cards problem to make I, sure you don't incur any other damages that I will have to find a creative accounting way to pay for. I, I mean, don't if think you, you just understand. want my dad's card, I just... Iris and I are both incapable of lying. Yes. I... I yeah, me too. Lenny. No, you lie constantly. <laughs> To my look, face. Look, were we there when all of those damages happened? Yes. Did we do things that then resulted in damages? Yes. Could we have maybe found another way? Yes. Were we thinking about those ways in the moment? No. Will we probably keep doing more damages? Yes. Touche. None of us know what the fuck is going on. Oh! <laughs> no! Whoa. Sorry, there was another adult who did a swear in front of me, and I think that has cycled and looped in my brain. Well, I don't know who this person is, but they they need to watch themselves. Maud uh, hangs her head in shame. I've corrupted them. I've ruined everything. <laughs> and as they fall into an existential despair, uh, your cell phones all go off in unison. It is a school announcement being texted to you uh from it's a me bondo uh yeah 2020 is over happy new year all thank you 2020 it's a me is bondo. over but Woo. yay for toasts yeah uh also from be right uk just aki to Aubrey, or is it from all of us i'm still standing yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it's from all of us, smiley face. Strange messages to receive from school advisories, but you're pretty sure the Funky Baba Ganoush cosplay Meg, Julia Lepetit is, Julia Lepetit is goals, and Vegan Strip Club Riot, who, those practical jokers, probably got a hold of stuff and, uh, you know, are responsible for that. Well, anyway. I, I don't really know what your I was following for a while, Iris, and then I think the it got away. From, I Basically, said what I said. I will a help hole and watch. And a pile of bones that's like cards. Oh, so we gotta go oh. stand there. Baron Sandy is involved with the hole. I know who that is. 
Who? Baron Zamdi is part of the Loa. The Loa are a, a pantheon of gods based out of Louisiana, the Creole and 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 basically African American or African American culture and African gods. Uh, they're an evolution of that. Baron Zambi specifically is the god of death. Kali, do you know him? Kali lets out one of those beleaguered sighs that only come from knowing someone for far too long and knowing their shit far too long. Yes, I am familiar with him. Okay, okay, all right, all right. And Iris, she does something that you've never seen her do in front of you before. Hmm. You always see it in the corner of your eye. She takes physical form. Oh, she's so beautiful. Oh, and she is rubbing her temples like she just has a pressure migraine. Oh. Uh, Monstrosity Jones, thank you for the tip. And Be Right UK, also thank you for the tip. But you got a toast, it's all right. Uh, okay, all right. Knowing him, knowing him. Whew, knowing him. He will be here at midnight. He will hit someplace here. And he'll be throwing a goddamn party. Mm. This seems really personal. Like you hate, like you're hating him, like someone that, like, you know, slept with your wife or something. This is really. This it's is not more. like that. It's not like that. I, it, it, Iris, you're really saying she's kind of starting to have your mannerisms a little bit. <laughs> I am a professional. I have been doing this for years. I've been doing this for millennia. I am the alpha and the omega. I have become death. And what does he do? What does he do? He makes a party out of it. He wears purple and he dances. And I don't have time for that. Excuse me. I yes. feel the need to step in here just for a moment. It is not his fault that he is a new god. I'm aware. The diaspora affected more than you think. Also, okay, Kali, um, I hate parties, right? But then when we had that sleepover, um, I was in emotional turmoil, but it was not as bad as I thought. So maybe if you give parties a try, maybe you'll like you'll like it. With that, she poofs back into a void of cosmos. Hmm. I hate it when you're right. So should we go stand by these bones or something? Yeah, I, I don't have anything else planned. Helen, it's at this moment you realize, oh, them lighting things on fire on average makes it, it tracks. Yeah, this tracks. I'm just going to take some notes and... Hey, uh, Helen. Yes, emancipation. Thinking, I mean, you can just call me Manny if you want to. That seems really informal, but go on. Well, I'm th I was thinking, like, Ma'at and Thoth seem like they're gods of fairly um, a, a, a synergetic, complementary abilities, and that between the two of them, we might be able to, like, uncover some answers so that uh, we don't do a bunch of damage to this graveyard. Uh, and maybe are able to come up with a more uniform plan? I am incredibly amenable to that. Yes, okay, let's go stand by Bones. Also, so if, if, like, if like the graveyard like burns down or explodes, like it's like nobody lives here and like, you know, it, it's not school property. So excuse it's like- Excuse me, everything within this town is affected one way or another by the actions of the students at our school, we will respect all of it like we were still on campus 
Lennox. You're right. You're right. You're right. Subsection B. And, and just because nothing is living here doesn't mean it's not important to people. You're right. You're right. Subsection A. <laughs> hey, Lenny. Has anyone told you lately that you're very cute? Uh, no, they haven't. You're cute. Oh, thanks. You're welcome. Has anyone told you lately that um, they think your hair is cool or that they like your butt in your pants or that they like how you run on the field? Uh, not to my knowledge, no. Oh, weird. Helen just turns deeply red and just backs into the shadows. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is more than a tsundere heart can take. <laughs> Avoid a nosebleed and move away. Of course, away. Helen is a tsundere. <laughs> They want to be a coup dere, but there's they're a hundred percent. Like it's not quite dere because she's not like super like hyperbolic in her reactions in either direction. Out. But yeah, I haven't figured out which dere Manny is at all. Oh, Manny's just a dere dere or a bi yeah, hundred percent. I have a PhD in the dere sciences. <laughs> all right, so uh, Manny and Helen, I want. So who has the higher power stat? Um. Betwixt the two of us? I have a D12. So Same. Oh, okay. hey. hey. Right. Who has the higher intelligence stat? Oh, definitely Helen. D12. That's, <laughs> that's not even a question. I have a D4. We're on opposite ends of that spectrum. Oh, buddy. Oh, All right. Oh, buddy. Oh, Manny's oh. so dumb. <laughs> oh, but it's such a cutie. It's okay. He. Um, as you walk by uh, Gen C Defend, Cat's Paw, the Diva JC, and Rado, four members of the School Historical Preservation Society, um, you find one of the uh, mausoleums had been hit by this uh, vandal. And I will need one of you to give me intelligence and one of you to give me power. I need both of you to spend an AP. Okay, cool. I'll do the power. All right, I'll do I the end. Mm -hmm. right. uh, can I use a reroll? Absolutely. Thank you. I rolled a 10. Nice. We rolled to a 12. Let's go. Oh, Team powers. Whoa. 22. Okay. So how does this look? Because you guys have basically just opened up like a show me everything box. How does this look? I feel like my aunt and both just start making out. <laughs> I'm, I'm honestly right. fine Work. with that. I just want to say that feathers are scattered. So because, many feathers. Yeah. Okay. Um, it is that moment where two incredibly <laughs> repressed, stuffed up, like, I am going to take my job seriously, people chill out and connect and have way too much fun together. And uh, it is not safe for work. The camera has to pan away. Um, I think even I think even Manny and Helen have to pan away. They're just yeah, like Yeah, I think it's just like a group turn. Just, oh, oh. Okay, let's just let them have a moment here. I can um, still hear it, and that's upsetting too. Indeed. But they're very cute together. And it's, nice, it's nice to see that they're so in love. Are you okay, uh, Helen? No. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need a tissue? No. Oh. <laughs> Do you need a hug? Helen, is your nose bleeding? <laughs> like a little bit. She's she's doing this. <laughs> it's fine. I'm fine. <laughs> and with that, um, the two of you are greeted with not only stuff that's seared into your retinas, but the absolute truth of what happened here. And you see every mausoleum that's been hit, the same thing happens. A figure clad entirely in purple with a skull for a head. Um, he kind of looks too long, almost, and the way he moves is almost stop motion. You smell bourbon and chocolate as he just brings these skeletons to life and he throws a fucking rager. I love that I am just a skull head away from being Ben <laughs> Sandy, I think. <laughs> well, things you learn about yourself, tight to tight. <laughs> There is Sam D. <laughs> <laughs> One of the coolest Loa. 
Absolutely. Fact. Uh, the things that I have seen, I can't unsee, but did you also see the skull purple? I did. I mean, as far as, as things go, throwing a, uh, throwing a skeleton party is uh, one of the more benign. Though, oh. I mean, it, it does. it's not making the people who... who are the caretakers of these mausoleums very happy and of course would appear like a desecration and there's no way we can tell them oh yeah baron samdi just popped by and had a party i think that would probably make them think we were crazy um so we probably shouldn't say that so we probably need to have a conversation with baron samdi and tell him to maybe not And I like, they're saying this out loud so everybody can hear it. Like everybody can weigh in. Yeah. It's not just Helen, like Iris and, and Lenny can hear this too. Uh, yeah, <laughs> while Manny's doing a good explanation, I think Helen's just making a low, uncomfortable noise. <laughs> just kind like, of pulling a Tina Belcher is like, uh. <laughs> yeah, just. Uh, uh, <laughs> Iris, I don't suppose you got any more information on how that whole whole might be connected to all of this i'm actually kind of curious if baron samdi is out here how did he escape all of the gods were turned into keys it would be really nice if orpheus were around right now but he's taking care of, of dahlia while she's sick mm. we cut back to a bunny feeding dahlia soup oh cute um Poor Dahlia has lost her voice and is probably doing the most uh, dramatical theatrical. Oh, oh God. and just uh, the whole room looks like yes. Phantom of the Opera. Yes, good. The candles yes. are lit. She's not supposed to have those in the dorm, but she no. does. And she's like constantly just guzzling slippery elm tea because she's like, that's how I get my voice back. <laughs> She, she has it's like that. she's wearing one of those boudoir robes with yeah. the fur lace, like yeah. the fur edges, like. Yeah, Full she definitely on. has a fainting couch in there. It's yeah. not yes. Yes. like standard for this. If she didn't it's before, just... Dionysus made sure she had it. Yes. Oh, for sure. For sure, Dahlia has a fainting couch. <laughs> um, okay, well, uh, um, Kali, sorry I got distracted earlier, um, but is this, is the whole related to, to, the, to the skeleton party? Kali falls silent for a moment before she seems to snap back. Someone made a hole in the key room. That explains why there was a seventh key found by one of you. And that also explains why Baron Samdi is running about. But who on earth would make a hole in the key room? Loki, the Phantom Queen, any of the other lackeys. I the Phantom Queen. The Phantom Queen wouldn't have done that. She wants all the keys. Ma'at, what are the percentage? What is the percentage of likelihood that this was low key? Remarkably high. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew he was a good, good boy at heart. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what? What is like? And hear me out. What is? What is the chance that it's? Uh, that this is actually the members of Oingo Boingo trying to throw an actual dead man's party? I will drop kick oh, you. Lenny. Well, Lenny, you are aware that the Oingo Boingo fan club at North Point Academy, you know, Blue Pez, Trovixani, Dork Lord Canada, Noisily Weeping Taco, the the four of them are like really, really an Oingo they Boingo. They really love Oingo Boingo. And I like, I get it. They do some good songs, but. But yeah, but after Cap club. <laughs> well, Captain Obvious has been trying to defund their club from the school council for a while now, but it just they throw really their good parties. Their paperwork's in order. Like, their paperwork's in order. They have members. Things can get filed incorrectly. <laughs> Ellen, you are trying to say something. Oh, uh, my question was just, uh, you mentioned other gods that are walking around, so are gods able to be out and about without keys and people associated with them? Only keys, usually. Loki is one of the exceptions, and I guess Baron Samdi would also be an exception, unless there is- And Orpheus. 
Orpheus is an exception. We do have Excuse somebody. Me. What is Orpheus a god of? Orpheus is dreams. a god of dreams and sleep. Mm. We also have somebody on campus walking around with the key to a Nazi. Oh, oh yeah. So all the tricksters, what a nightmare. No. Yeah. Yeah, Anansi is, is hanging around somewhere with one of our students. We haven't figured out who it is yet. Can't you just see the giant god behind them? Only if they allow it to manifest. Yeah, we can't and always Some see of it. us are quite small. Anansi is a spider. And tricky. Mm. So do we want to close this... We should. Why don't we open it? The hole even more. What happens if we do that? I, I don't know that it's a good idea to widen the hole, if only because, and hear me out. We don't know which gods will come through. Some of them might be benevolent and nice. Baron's just throwing a party. He's being a little bit obnoxious about it. But for the most part, he's harmless. But what if, what if some of the more malignant and malicious gods start to break through? Oh, it would be mass death, child. Oh my goodness! If Lucifer got out, oh, ooh, that'd be fun. And by fun, I mean horrible. I mean, I don't think Lucifer is all that bad. There are worse than Lucifer. It's true. I went drinking with them. We should close it then, right? We should close it right away. I think if that it could we, be dangerous. I think that closing. Yeah, we wouldn't better. want Lucifer to get out because Lucifer is probably the worst of all of them because he's they not give you, that. No, because because they give you choices. Oh, they do. They they're yeah. And we know how humans do with choice. Um, you make Wonder Woman eighty four. Oh. <sighs> Ninkasa, Ninkasa laughs at her own joke. It's not that funny. Okay, How I know that saying? it's maybe your job or my job. Is this my job now? To It doesn't have to be. Things, but it doesn't have to be. You could just hide in your room for days and days while everything turns into fire and brimstone and hell around you. And you can just keep living your life like that and, and be okay with it. I've done that for a long time. Not lately. Not lately. I will unpack that later. Um, but what if we, instead of closing the hole, let's figure out what they're trying to do so we can just stop the whole thing. You're all very strong. You've burnt down so many parts of the campus. Not <laughs> on purpose. But yeah, you I, we actually put out the fire. We didn't start the fire. Yeah. And it then it's uh, always good. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. I like when you sing. Um, really? Yeah. Yeah. I think it, it, it adds a little bit of joie de vivre um, to the situation. Yeah. We are never the ones that perpetrate it, except for that one time we, we did send everyone into a massive uh, dream coma so that we could dream surf. But apart from that, that one time. Yeah. Did and you put me in a dream coma? Coma? Did you come uh, to the slumber party a couple weeks back? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, don't put me in any more dream comas. Thank you. Okay. And But it was anytime... very good sleep, wasn't it? It was the most restful eight hours you've had in your entire life. Honestly. Yeah. Huh. Well, why don't we... I All I'm saying is there are four of us here and more than that in gods and we've got this one outnumbered so let's figure out exactly what they're trying to do sounds good to me i like mysteries all right okay i'm gonna prepare i don't i like everything being spelled out for me so lenny l-e-n-n-y there you go so it seems like the best po the best point of attack uh helen because you're very smart i'm gonna make you roll for this or anything uh this Baron Samdi only seems to be appearing at night. He throws the party in the mausoleum. The party does not seem to leave the mausoleum. And then when the sun rises, or at least when the gates of the cemetery open, he's gone and all that's left is what appears to be vandalism. 
Mm. So maybe breaking in at night might be your best bet. Why don't we come back in the evening and go to the party? <sighs> Sounds good. Give me just a second. And Manny's going to go over back to Miss Freeman, like very cautiously since they seem to have freaked her out the, the first time. Um, um, I, I just wanted to say that I, I'm really sorry for worrying you or freaking you out earlier, but I think I know what's happening here. And if there's anything that I can do to help or, or fix the problem, uh, I'm going to do it. And, and so are my friends. But hopefully this shouldn't happen again. Again, I'm very sorry that your mausoleum was disturbed. What's your name? Me? Oh, I'm Emancipation Brown. Hmm. What a name. Thank you, Emancipation Brown. You can call me Manny. It's fine. Manny. She softens a little bit towards you. You seem like a good kid. A weirdo, but a good kid. Am I a weirdo? As you return to school, as you return to the campus uh, and night falls, you get another school announcement. This one from Monstrosity Jones, wishing everyone a happy new year, y'all. Thank you, Monstrosity Jones. And then nightfall comes to North Point. And the four of you find yourselves outside the closed cemetery. Can I suggest a bit of subterfuge? Sure. Okay. So if we have an idea of what mausoleum he might hit up next, I'm just trying to do this with the least amount of conflict possible. So what if we went in there um, and hid inside of the graves and pretended to be skeletons? No response. <laughs> it's just a game. Is there a way we can? Hey, Mr. Rat Friend, can you turn us into skeletons? <laughs> I didn't actually hear you, Stephen. Oh, he just hisses. Can you turn us into skeletons? That is not an answer, hiss. You must learn to use your words. I will feast on the remnants of your bones. No, you will not. You can turn us into skeletons, though. I think he will, but not in probably the way we probably want. Right, right. As in he will expose everything else to then reveal a skeleton by yeah. eating it. I was thinking oh, we will be delicious. Oh, if you can't behave, you're going back in the pocket. Fine. I can't turn you into skeletons, but I can get you inside. We, we could just like hide behind the bones or something. Put them on top of us. I don't, I, I just feel like if we can enter the party under the guise of being guests, we we'll be less likely to fight. Well, yeah, we have to get inside the mausoleum, which I think is what the, the this yeah. creepy guy is saying he can help us do. Well, which mausoleum? Good question. I don't suppose we could learn which mausoleum might be the next one to get hit, just based oh. on the pattern. Well, I could always, uh, and in Casa, which one of these places would be like a rock and party spot? You that think? is a good way to find that out. Uh, Ninkasa appears. Oh, well, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so that limits these two. That one has bad vibes. We're going to that one tonight. That's where uh, the party is. All right. We did a vibe check. We know where the party is. Vibe check! All right. Uh, so I walk up to the the mausoleum. It's like, is there any like visible way to enter? Yeah, there is just a... Uh, door ah i'm just gonna open it hold on hold on hold on uh can i and, oh, oh no sorry. go ahead 
If it happens, Let, it happens. <laughs> Lenny, as you open it, I need all of you to roll me dex and speed. Oh my God. Oh no. Uh, this is fine. This is initiative, everybody. Bam, 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 bam. So Aubrey, the way combat works in this game is initiative is also your AC. Okay. So a high initiative, you get to go first. You're also harder to hit. Good to know. I did not roll well, so that's I fine. did not either. Wow, that's a terrible roll. Jeez, what are my dice doing? today they're like you haven't played this game in a while so let's just fuck you took you a over. couple weeks off uh so aubrey that's a six mm-hmm. all right helen got us manny you got a four lenny Ooh. 11 <laughs> oh thank god at least <laughs> us roll well yikes all right and iris with an 11 so lenny you open up the door the four of you are bombarded with loud trumpets and party music. Lights are shining in different colors. It is a rave. Inside, you see four skeletons just half cutting a rug and having a good time. Uh, Iris, uh, you see Baron Samdi, or at least what you assume is Baron Samdi. It's basically a purple suited. Jack Skellington looking motherfucker. <laughs> okay. What are you going to do? Um, I want to make Kali pretend that she was invited to the party. Okay. Uh, that is going to be charisma and oh, no. <laughs> charisma and defense and spend your AP point. Okay. I feel like I should be at a disadvantage here because Kali really doesn't want to. I, you know what? That's fair. Go ahead and subtract two from the roll. Okay. So it's, uh, I'm sorry. You said it was charisma and defense. Yes. Okay. And subtract two. Okay. <laughs> I'm already pretty low. <laughs> okay. So I rolled a seven. That'll be a five. All right. Um, on a five. She takes tangible form again, and she is stunning. Baron, I'm here for the party. And immediately, uh, Iris, I need you to make a charisma, another charisma defense roll with no negative this time. Seven. Ah, uh, we were looking for an eight. Dang. Um, Iris, you want to dance. I'm sorry? You want to dance. Iris wants to dance. Iris wants to dance. Okay. I, guys, I feel really different. Yep. I feel really, I feel really, I feel really different. Aki, thank you for the tip. <laughs> Wait, so am I, am I going in Iris, there? Iris, you are going in and you are dancing. Oh, I, I imagine her doing like, just like a really aggressive step clap. So she's just like. <laughs> yes. Um, but she's like panicked in her brain, I think. A little bit. Exhilarating. It's, it's definitely that. Um, next up is the dead man's party. Uh, they are piling out and they're gonna conga line on Lenny. So let's see, they will be rolled. You're very lucky, Lenny. They don't have the best stats because they're all dead. Uh, no, that's a 13. Lenny, go ahead and roll defense real fast. And why not? Four. All right. Um, you take nine damage as the skeletons just kind of push you over and begin conga lining over you. <laughs> hey! Yeah. Hey! They rolled really well. Yeah! Helen, this is stupid. What are you going to do? This is ridiculous. Uh, Helen drops back as soon as like Lenny went to go open the door. Uh, and she's gonna like pull out like a little slip of paper and just scribble on it, uh, skeleton 
disguise <laughs> and see what happens. I don't know how these powers work. Uh, that's the fun of this system. They kind of work <laughs> however you need them to work. At the Yay! Time. Go ahead and roll me uh, charisma and defense. I think that's fair. Okay, okay. I'm and spend an AP point as you are using your power. Perfect. Um, D8, uh, ooh, my defense is a, D, a big old D4. We love to see you. There you are. Uh, six? Can I use a reroll? You can use a reroll. We have uh, two left. Okay. Uh, I jumped up to a nine. Perfect. Uh, you make the skeleton costume and you kind of look like a calica. You look like a skeleton. Like you can see through your hand and you see all the bones just kind of rattle about. Sweet. Uh, she goes to like tuck the little sheet of paper away and realizes that she's just bones and kind of shrugs and is just going to slide into the conga line awkwardly b behind them and just go like step over Lennox, doesn't do the stomp mm -hmm. and wants to try to like lead the, like how do I, I'm trying to control from the back like a conga line power bottom and get them to go back in the in the party and leave everyone like, alone. Well, Reverse next, like pipe piping. You piper just them. say conga line <laughs> like power, power bottom. bottom. Yeah. Oh my god. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Abria Iyengar, I I will I will continue to do this. Will you marry me? <laughs> <laughs> you need Eventually to raise your standards. <laughs> also, a real, mess. No. real quick, real quick, because someone was very kind and dropped some money. Can't imagine who. Uh, our next episode will be an anime convention. Thank you, Aki. Yeah, who's <laughs> Aki? Who's Aki? I don't know. I've met them before. I don't know. He's one cool. of those bad kids from earlier yeah. in the episode. The no. bully spent money on the show. Wow. I know. Shocker. So, uh, next round, Helen, you can go ahead and try to command the skeleton crew as a conga line power bottom i'm gonna live i'm gonna have to live with that uh and i need a charisma defense roll from you wait for me yes from you ah crap uh sure it will be fine it was not is a four it's a four yeah no no you had plans you had plans but uh you know it's real conga lines are fun They're no fun no I don't want to enjoy this. Yep, you've fallen from the bone rattle. And you're having a good time. How, okay, Lenny, you're up next. <laughs> okay, Lenny's going to get up and dust himself off. All right, I guess nobody wants wants the keg I brought. And then he's going to use his magical powers to manifest a keg and just toss it at the conga line of skeletons. All right, uh, give me a ranged attack. Yeah. I, yeah, uh, range strength, I apologize. Range strength, all right. Range, and what was my strength? Oh, yeah, okay, I'll just roll the same one twice then on the spot. Okay, that'll be good. Uh, 12 minus, or are we doing the minus two thing for the attack? Uh, since this is an attack, yes. You yes, will be... so, so it will be ju just a 10. Okay, uh, that more than hits. Go ahead and uh, uh, let's see. So 10. Da, 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 da. All right. Um, you roll this keg and Helen, you, I need you to give me a dexterity defense roll. Good. The tiny dice doing their best. <laughs> uh, nine? We do have rerolls just in case. That's okay. okay. The dex the dex roll is being helped very much by the the D eight uh, nine. What nine? Perfect. Great. So, Ellen, um, are you much of a dancer? Uh, publicly, no. But if I'm a like if I'm a private school kid, I definitely did like the battery of classical dance classes as a kid, and just is secret graceful, but doesn't dance. You know, out of joy because I don't feel that. Yeah. Uh, you see this barrel rolling towards you and you're not about to be Donkey Konged. You sidestep it and <laughs> just in time for it to hit 
one of the skeletons and it just kind of shatters. Uh, it doesn't look like it's damaged the bones though. All right. Shout oh. out to the flamenco class. All right. Indeed. Manny, you're up next. Excuse oh, wait. me. Actually, real quick. Lenny, charisma defense. Okay. Uh, charisma defense. Come on, very tiny dice. Uh, is four going to cut it? Absolutely not. And you join the boogie. I mean, I, I guess I could, like, I don't know, I could cut loose a little bit. Sun Wukong is there, and he's uh, spinning you around. You guys are, you're having a dance. Excuse me, Baron Samdi. I do not think it is appropriate for you to be partying here. I am going to have to ask you to leave and put those bones back where they came from, or so help me. Baron Samdi... Uh, wearing Venetian sunglasses because I think that's a funny image. Pops his head out of the mausoleum. I'm sorry, what? You heard me. Out of respect for you, I understand why you are here and why you are doing what you are doing. But you are disturbing the poor people whose families have been laid to rest here. It's one thing to throw a party. It's another thing to leave a mess behind. That's not nice. Go ahead and give me a charisma roll. Sure. Hmm. Eight. You, uh, you dance often? I dance a lot. I am part of the pep squad at school. Kind of. I'm the manager. Sometimes I get to dance. I like dancing. Dancing is fun. But there is a time and a place for everything. Okay. I have a proposal for you. Hmm? Listen, I am but a show of what I used to be. As soon as the sun comes up, I'm just a key. But, you know, right now I'm in a bit of my element, so I can do, I can have a little fun. If I promise to clean up, if I promise to clean up and everyone goes back to where they belong, you can have my key and this will be the last party. You have to put all of the bones back where they came from, not just this mausoleum. I think that's mighty fair. You also have to give me my friends back. Oh, uh, the desire to dance uh, is, well, you're no longer being forced to dance. I don't know if you're still dancing or not. Sun Wukong is certainly dancing with you, Lenny. Yeah, Lenny's just. Um, Iris is definitely still dancing, but she's like pretending that she's still being compelled. <laughs> Oh no, I'm being forced to do this. Oh, She's no. like, isn't it terrible that we're all being forced to do this? I uh, stopped it. I, would I can't happy, hear you. I would happy to take care of your key. Uh, I would also appreciate a little bit of information on to, as to how exactly it was that you escaped from your prison, but we can cover that later. In the meantime, how about we party? Manny. I think this is the start of a beautiful friendship. I'll and... get some pizza from Big Big Mama's Big Papa's. Ooh, the the, 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 the like the really the, the long ones, the long boys. Party subs, party pizzas. Helen, this might be the first non-sanctioned school party you've been to. Iris, it is definitely the first non-sanctioned school party you've been to, and you're dancing with the dead in the middle of a cemetery, but it's a pretty average night here at North Point. And that is where we Just, are going wait, to call wait, this game. Before we call oh, it. Before we call it, okay. As right. we're conga lining, Manny is going to turn to Helen in the conga line and go, we should have lunch together. Okay, Manny, Manny, I can call you Manny, right? Yes. <laughs> I hate yelling. Can I be quiet? Okay. Okay. Please have lunch with me. I, I would like that very much. Oh. Helen, I have a quick question for you, though. 
Uh huh. What do you call the school disciplinary committee? What, what do you tell the school disciplinary committee when you're stopped by Jeff M. 0307 uh, in the morning? Because they people swore they saw you in the cemetery last night. Uh, looking primmer and more proper than ever. She's just going to like, uh, <laughs> I think she uses another one of her like abilities to just make like a downpour everywhere. <laughs> so there's just like, cool mood like thunderstorm behind her and going just says how long have I been at this school and you know me in what universe would I ever be caught one in a cemetery two off campus three dancing (laughs) (laughs) and no one mentioned dancing so that was like her dumb thing that she said out loud yes but Jeff M 0307 of the you know New England 0307 yes (laughs) just Backs the fuck off. It's like the, it's just like that thing where where Bill Murray like steals your phone and says no one will ever believe you. <laughs> exactly. And then uh, like she pushes up her glasses one more time for the, for the anime and then does like a little conga line ole as she like walks away. <laughs> I love it, uh, Chovixani. Thank you so much for the tip. And that is where we are calling tonight's nor- uh, new Pantheon Academia. Aubrey, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for letting me come hang out. You guys are great. Thank you it's so been much. So much fun oh uh, this was a blast These are married yeah no and they they did stuff to each other it was i just the beak it was the the i just i'm haunted by that honestly <laughs> i'm haunted by that i'm haunted by that <laughs> just lots um, of bird kissing yeah. birds kissing just peck, peck. don't even know <laughs> <laughs> so abria where can they find you uh, you guys can find me on social media at Quiddy, Q-U-I-D-D-I-E. Uh, I stream all over the place. You can actually catch both me and Aki tomorrow and every Monday over on D&D's Twitch channel, playing Rhyme of the Frost Maiden with our group Chaos Initiative at 1 p.m. PST. Uh, oh, yeah. In a couple weeks, you will be able to catch me and Eric and the rest of the Salt Bays all together for uh, the new season of Salt Bay. I don't want to say what the title is yet, but we kind of technically have it, so... I'm bad at secrets, but we'll- What is it? What is it? Tell me, tell me. We'll keep um, it between us. It's butts. It's just butts. <gasps> salt bay yeah. butts! Salt butts. Salt, salt butts. butts. So yeah. come salt back butts. for salt butts in a couple weeks. Uh, at 8 p.m., 7 p.m. We might be moving the time. Tuesday in the evening time, Pacific. I don't know what we're going to do time-wise. I don't know anything. Eric, I need you to manage me much harder. Thank you. And on Fridays, uh, you can catch me over on Pixel Circus at 6 p.m. Pacific with Failed Save, another D&D uh, actual play group that's run by Vince Queso. And it's super good and really fun. And I love everyone there, too. And every Monday, a new episode of Storybenders, my uh, Avatar The Last Airbender uh, podcast comes out. And that, that's it. Okay, move along. Goodbye. Ah. Goodbye. That's Ellie, what she says. where can they find you? Um, you can find me on everything. Uh the social media and Twitch at Kelly Nugy, um, K-E-L-L-Y-N-U-G-E-E. Um, you can listen to my uh, podcasts, Teen Creeps, where we talk about YA, Pulp Fiction from the 80s and 90s, uh, or on Same Day Shipping, where we ship everyone with everyone. Uh, and I always bring the cursed ships. So that's that's what I do. Uh, so check that out. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else. Right now, not too much. So those things. Awesome. Aki, where can they find you? Hi, everybody. I am Aki. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram. Don't follow me on Instagram. Waste of my time and yours at Mix Genie in a Bottle. That's M-X-G-I-N-I-I-N-N-A-B-O-T-T-L-E. Wow. Sorry about that. Um, I need to do an update, but you can find my entire Twitch streaming schedule over on my Twitch personal stream twitch.tv slash shidari aki that's s-h-i-d-a-r-e-a-k-i um and yeah i'm really excited because um chaos initiative is back tomorrow um and i have lots of fun cool stuff to announce coming up here in the next like weekish or so um that i can't talk about yet but that i'm very excited to share with everybody um so yeah get excited it's gonna be fun (laughs) Awesome. Uh, my dear friend, Eric, what do you have to pitch? Uh, do, do, you could uh, Salt Bay when it comes back. When that happens, that's going to be a good show. There's a lot of good people. Salt Butts. Have. You have to use salt the butts. new name. Salt Butts. Hashtag Salt Butts. Yeah. 
salt butts you can check that out uh you can always follow me uh on all the social media including twitch at mostly eric which is where i stream uh video games during the week uh and stuff and you know and then catch me here <laughs> nice and sadly, I'm still in Twitter jail, but uh, you should be able to follow me at DMJPope22 whenever I get out of Twitter jail for telling He keeps books. calling out TERFs and, getting, yeah, uh, and yeah. getting put into jail for it. It's great. I don't have an account there anymore because I fuck told a transphobe to fuck off, but fuck them. I don't fuck feel terps. bad. All you've missed is Bean Dad. You're better for it. You really well, are. Well, you can follow Dude. me over on TikTok at Stephen Pope 101 where you can get my hot spicy takes. And I also do uh, one minute lore where I give you the entire lore for an RPG in a minute. Uh, we've also real quick unlocked our friendly ghost girl. So that will be something to play with next episode during an anime convention. It's gonna be a weird one folks. So you should definitely check it out same time next Gosh, week. Gosh, I should thank the person who unlocked that for us. I know, I know. Who did such a thing? Clutch McGee. Impossible to tell, impossible to tell. I know. There's just no way to know. Uh, Also, here at Saving Throw Show, we like to give you some great quality content, and you should definitely be checking out Dice X Machina. It is our Theros Dungeons and Dragons game, ran by Riley, who is a queen, and we must stand. Like, so good. So good, you guys. She is so good at her job. She makes me look like crap at my job and I thank her for it. Excuse me, you are both wonderful and it is not a competition. You won't speak excuse. about my Do friend like that. Do not make me come over there and drop kick you. No, don't come over here. We're socially distanced here at Saving Throw. But even if it's not a competition, You can wins. put a brick in a boot and throw it through a window pretty uh, easy. Aki has a sort of uncannily long legs and can still maintain respiratory social distance while kicking you from like a block and a half away. I love it. Anyway, thank you to chat for tuning in and joining us. Make sure you come back next week for some very, very silly fun. Thanks to Dom Zook for making everything possible. And thank, thank you, Bria. You to, and thank you, Abra, for joining us this week. It's Seriously, been so much fun. And I, miss, I love oh, you. I miss fun. you. You're a queen. I'll and fight also, Mika again. I'm not afraid of her. <laughs> please, no fighting. But also thanks to Rookie Jet Games. You can get over arms available at Drive Through RPG. Uh, so with that out of the way, Happy New Year. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> and we will see you next week. Bye, guys. Bye.